in the previous part we saw the process of diffusion and we also discussed the various factors that affect this process now let us see certain uh, processes where this diffusion is helping or is taking place the first thing is for respiratory gaseous exchange the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen which is taking place at both the lungs level as well as at the tissue level that is by diffusion so here this uh, gases are diffusing second important thing where this diffusion is uh, taking place is transpiration here the water vapor which accumulates in the stomatal space it diffuses out so here it is again water vapor which is moving from higher concentration to low it's higher to lower concentration in certain insects they release pheromones to attract the opposite sex and that is a chemical which is released in the air and it diffuses the other insect gathers or detects this pheromones and then gets attracted for copulation or reproduction so pheromones also diffuse that means here we are talking about all these diffusion thing another important process where this diffusion helps is basic transport transport of substances from one cell to another or in the cytoplasm itself that means if in one area some substance some food has been absorbed then it starts to diffuse from that higher concentration area to the lower concentration area so it helps in uh, trans uh, instead of transport we should say proper distribution of substances and this can happen in cytoplasm or between the cells or between cells this is again by simple diffusion and it is a passive process so this movement will take place till equilibrium so there are many pro processes or many things where this diffusion is actually helping now we will take one more process that is of passive transport and it is known as facilitated diffusion facilitated diffusion this is also passive and it also takes place according to the concentration gradient but here we have one word along with it this is simple diffusion this is facilitated diffusion let us first understand this process and then we will understand why this word has been given to it this is the plasma membrane and these are the phospholipid molecules this becomes our phospholipid bilayer and there are extrinsic and intrinsic proteins so this protein is intrinsic protein and here are these extrinsic proteins so this becomes our plasma membrane certain proteins they act as carrier protein say for example this protein that we are talking of is acting as a carrier protein carrier protein is going to carry the substance so if it has to transport a substance across the plasma membrane this carrier protein binds to this substance and it moves from its place this protein comes here the substance is still attached to it it comes here the substance is still attached to it the protein comes on the inner side and releases that substance in the cytoplasm that means the substance got transported across the plasma membrane with the help of carrier proteins that means for the transport of this substance there was an external or an additional facility which was provided and that is why we are calling it facilitated transport or facilitated diffusion 
but we have to remember that in this case also there is no ATP consumed. So here also no ATP. That means it is a passive process. But there is a protein which is going to help in transport of these substances. So there are certain special substances in our body which get transported across the plasma membrane with the help of these carrier proteins. Let us take the examples. The substances which come by this facilitated uh, transport are fructose, nucleotides. These are special molecules because there is a special facility which is given to them. And on RBC membrane and liver cell membrane. Liver cell membrane. There is again a carrier protein which helps in facilitated diffusion of glucose. So that is only in case of liver cells and RBC. So liver cells and RBCs when take glucose, the glucose enters in this manner. Otherwise glucose can enter in different ways also like active transport. But here it is coming by passive transport also. But there is a limitation that passive transport takes place only up to equilibrium because there is no energy that has been used up here. So facilitated diffusion is diffusion. We can also consider it as some kind of a uh, some kind of an extra facility provided for certain special molecules to move into the cell and this is done with the help of these carrier proteins. These are the substances which get transported by facilitated diffusion. So after this we are done with all three processes that is osmosis, diffusion and facilitated. These are all passive conditions are that it is going to be from higher concentration to lower. It will take place through uh, uh, till equilibrium is reached and here there is no ATP consumed. Now in the next part we will take up active transport.